This is Sims, and we are back with more Taisho Alice. Yay! And we're in Red's route, and we just finished our second day with him, and now we're going to sleep. And I'm not sure if we're the one who's dreaming or Red's the one who's dreaming, so I'm just going to say it's us. So, Because, you know, usually when we went to Cinderella's point of view, it said Cinderella's story, so I would assume it would have said Red's story or whatever. But anyway, that night I dreamed of the distant past. I was a child again, sitting alone on the lake shore. Why? No reason in particular. I had no strong attachment to the lake, nor any special memories of it. Unlike most children at that age, however, I didn't attend school. Sounds like it might be more red, but... Thus, I was forced to avoid the public eye, lest I draw unwanted attention. It sounds like it's more like it's red. You know what I mean? Than us, but okay. On weekdays, the lake was deserted and hardly anyone ever passed through the forest to get here, which made it the ideal place to hang out in secret. That was the only reason I spent my time here. Truth be told, I would have gone anywhere if it meant I had a place to belong. I remember it was, an, it was nice and sunny that day. Unlike most children, however, I didn't play. I just sat there and listened to the waves. You might think a lake wouldn't have waves, but you would be mistaken. The lake tide swells and recedes, just like the ocean. Supposedly, these waves are created by friction between the surface water and the wind. That said, a lake is still not the same as an ocean. A lake will not lead you to distant lands. But even if it did, I would likely never go. I'm assume I feel like we're red, because why would we not be in school? You know what I mean? But again, I don't know. What you doing over there? Let's play! That day, a boy called out to me. Or maybe it is me. I don't know. Assuming he wasn't a ghost, he must have been an awfully trudent, uh, truant student, considering everyone else was at school. My mother was right. The world was full of monstrous wolves. We're red, because isn't that... She said that to him in the beginning of the story. All right, I'm just going to keep reading it normal, because I'm not 100% sure, but like... Thus, I ignored him. Just as she had instructed me, after all, wolves are not to be trusted. Eventually, the boy gave up trying to talk to me and walked away. How relieved I felt, knowing I could safely go back to my life of solitude. But the next day, at the very same place and time, the boy turned up once more, asking me to play with him. This caught me off guard. I hadn't expected him to show up a second time. Once again, I did as my mother had taught me and gave him the cold shoulder. I had already broken one of her rules. I could very well break another. I couldn't very well break another. But the boy refused to give up. Day in and day out, he tried again and again to get my attention. And the next thing I knew, I realized I was looking forward to seeing him. Because deep down, I had always wanted someone to play with. This poor lonely little child. I yeah, I'm going to say that has to be has to have been read because Because our mother never told us that. That started off in the very beginning. His mother told him that. And then he went into the house in the woods and everyone was dead, I'm assuming. So I'm just assuming. But it's fun to share a meal with someone, don't you think? The next morning, in sharp contrast with my chipper mood, Red ate the omelet I prepared for him in total silence. Do you ever go out to eat with your friends or anything? No. What about your family? Those questions are irrelevant to this mission. In other words, I should probably mind my own business. Sorry. It's fine. Once I finished my food, it was time to go to school. Will you accompany me again? Yes, of course. Well, this is where we part ways. Here's your lunch for the day. Thank you. At the school gates, I held out a box lunch for Red. As I spoke, I looked into his bright red eyes. Are you frightened? Huh? Oh yeah, pretty frightened. You don't look like it. Maybe you're not looking hard enough. As much as I would love to accompany you inside, I seem to recall you instructed me not to just yesterday. Regardless, I strongly doubt the culprit would try to attack you on school grounds. Should anything happen, however, please be sure to seek help from someone nearby. That's it? Yes, that's it. 
Because <laughs> she's like, okay. I put both hands over my face. Then whip them away with a flourish. What are you doing? Making a silly face. I didn't have a mirror handy, but I was but I was sure I must have looked absolutely ridiculous. I'll leave it to your imagination. Yes, I see that. Is that it? That's it. At this rate, Red's frigid composure would soon make my own heart freeze over too. Maybe he's just not that into you. <laughs> like I feel like we're trying really hard to get this boy to like us, and he's like, no? <laughs> like, I kind of, like, I feel awkward. I still enjoy it, but I still feel awkward. Anyway, here's your lunch, Wolf. Awesome, dude. What'd you make? I can't remember his voice from yesterday. <laughs> like, what was day for? Salisbury steak. Oh, hell yeah. Meat. 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 At lunchtime, I gave Wolf his box lunch, same as always. Though he might look like a beta male, he has the carnivorous appetite of an alpha. As he gleefully opened the lid, I gazed at him just as I gazed at Red. W what's up, dude? Am I unattractive? What? I want your honest opinion. No jokes, no sugarcoating. Now this is random. Wait, I know! Did you finally notice my massive hotness? Oh, you're adorable, but not hot. No. No, this is about Red. Figures. He paused to think for a moment. All right, what's the story? You want me to help you, don't you? Essentially, yeah. Oh, God. He stared up at the sky. Right. I guess I was the one who originally suggested it. No, you specifically asked us if we wanted to ride his dick. Not exactly in those words, but you asked us if we wanted the D. So I'm just saying? I... Yeah! In contrast with the day before, today he seemed reluctant to help me. Looks like I'll have to use my secret weapon. Crocodile tears. In execution, it's more like puppy dog eyes, but still. Pretty please? Hey, no! That's cheating! Okay, fine, you win! I'll help you. Thank you! Evidently, Wolf was a sucker for the waterworks. I think it's just us. Okay, Wolf, tell me. How do I make someone laugh? What? All this time, I've never once seen him laugh. Hmm. What if you made a silly face? already tried that. You already tried? I wanted him to laugh, even if it meant like I looked like a freak in the process. Sounds like it completely backfired on you. Yeah, it just bothers me that he's always scowling. Try tickling him. Unless he's not ticklish, then he'd probably look at you like you're crazy, but if he's ticklish, you can't help but laugh. Just I don't know if there's much you can do about it. I mean, the dude's gotta be on guard 24-7. Maybe he can't really afford to laugh. So it's just a cop thing? Probably. Right. I guess so. Or maybe I'm just bad at making friends. I slump my shoulders. Aw, oh, come on, Arisu. You've got tons of friends, don't you? Like you? Yeah, like me. I feel the two of us hit it off almost instantly. No surprise there. We're like two peas in a pod. If he's not in love with us, I'd just be shocked, is all I'm saying. Oh, God. Somebody save me. I put my face in my hands. Rude! I'm just messing with you. I pulled my hands away and stuck my tongue out at him. Okay, well, the most I can say at this point is, you should just keep talking to him. You think I should start conversations with him? Exactly. Don't mind if he ignores you. Just talk and talk and talk. Oh, yeah, that's what men love. They're ignoring you. And you're like, so blah, 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 blah. That's why they're ignoring you. This is why I live alone. Because I talk and talk and talk and nobody likes that. That's what you're here for, right? Oh, God. Wouldn't that be annoying? See? I can't... It's more... Yeah, that's more like... Girl, no. You'll never get him to open up if he keeps sweating the small stuff. Hmm. So what you're saying is I should get pushy with him. Bingo! And lucky for you... You're already a master at that. Right back at ya. We laughed and exchanged a high five. After 
I finished my lunch, I was walking down the hall when I encountered Mr. Huntsman. Here at school, he wasn't allowed to smoke cigarettes. Instead, I found him sucking on a lollipop. But if we're like 18, why is he still here in school? Is he older than us? Doesn't he have like a job and lives on his own? Like, is his job being a teacher? What the fuck does he do here? As he passed me, he silently handed me his empty lunchbox. What did you think? Pretty decent. Which means you thought it was good, huh? Well, you're welcome. I make lunch for our fucking brother who is a douche hole. Doesn't give a fuck if something bad happens to me, probably. And like lives on his own, but this motherfucker can't make his own lunch. Girl, you a doormat. You way too nice for your own good. It's a shame he's our brother because he's kind of hot. Maybe not as hot as Red, but like he's still pretty. But uh, yeah. I took the third empty box and put it in my bag. Oh, I can't do math. I'm so dumb. I bet somebody in the last part said it was like, where's the mysterious other lunchbox? We make four of that. Right, us. We're the other one. That's what I was missing. Just now when she's like, third, I'm like, third. Oh, I wasn't counting myself. <laughs> I'm going to bet someone in the last part made that comment. I don't know. I These haven't been uploaded yet. Like, none of Taisho Alice has been uploaded by, as I'm recording this. Like, I was recording in advance for Christmas. And now we're just going to record this whole game before Christmas. Because otherwise, I'm going to... Be gone. I'm not, I'm, it's going to be like two weeks of... I started recording that just to make sure and then halfway through the route. I can't do that. I got to finish the route. So it's like... So yeah. I bet somebody commented on the last one like, uh, duh, you, wolf, your brother, and red. That's four. Yeah, I, 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 f I forgot me. Awesome. Super wicked fucking smart. Wicked fucking smart, y'all. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. You're rather chipper today. Having fun? Of course. You seem pretty grumpy, though. Oh, silly me. You're always like that. I clasped my hands behind my back and grinned playfully at him. True. These days I keep getting roped into one incident after another. I've been trying to think of a solution. Oh, I see. Sounds like you're working hard. I bowed my head in deference, in deference to him. But he saw through my sarcasm and bonked me on the head with a sigh. You be careful. Careful of what? I've heard some things lately. You're being stalked by that wolf guy? Oh, that. Yeah. Look, I know you're smart. All I'm saying is don't get cocky. Okay, I won't. You say that now. He looked at me with contempt. Oh, yeah. I clapped my hands together. What is it? I wanted to ask you. How do you get someone to let their guard down around you? I decided I would get his advice while I was at it. Aren't you the expert in that department? Well, he has no weak points, so I'm trying to figure out how I can get close to him. And now you're running out of time. A brilliant deduction, my dear Watson. I talked to Wolf about it too, and he told me I should just get aggressive. Mr. Huntsman took the lollipop out of his mouth and then take him out to a cafe or take him somewhere romantic. There's plenty of options. I can't believe our brother is giving us love advice. This is bizarre, but... Also, try to initiate physical contact, even if it feels forced. It will be forced! That's where we have to get aggressive. We literally have to tackle him because he jumps out of the fucking way. I get it. So basically, I should take him out on a date. But where? As I tilted my head in contemplation, Mr. Huntsman fixed his smoldering gaze on the distant horizon. His smoldering gaze. That is a sexy way to describe your brother, by the way. This was something he often did whenever he was lost in thought. Then he turned back to me and said in his usual flat tone, Let's see, how about a quiet lake deep in the forest? Oh my god, we're going to give him PTSD. So there we were, at the lake. Sure enough, it was a quiet, romantic place. The perfect spot for a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Granted, we couldn't always talk at, we could always talk at home, but knowing me, I'd probably get distracted. Looks like Mr. Huntsman really knows his stuff. That's a playboy, playboy for you, I guess. Miss Arisu. Yes? Why is it you wish to come here? Well... No reason in particular to get to know you better. 
I feel like we should be honest. Because I wanted to get to know you better, of course. I looked into his eyes as I spoke. We have, are we either doing okay with him or we've got all the wrong answers? I don't know. Get to know me? Yes, you. His eyes widened slightly. Why choose the lake? His voice was almost inaudible. That's what my friends recommended. I see. Was our brother the one that used to play with him? That's what I was wondering. If it wasn't us and we were... Re who and Well, no, because we would have been at school and our brother would have been at school. Because mm -hmm. if we were the one at the lake, then it would make sense that Red Riding Hood was the boy that was trying to get his play. But I'm pretty sure he was the one at the lake. And that's why we take him to the lake. And that's why he's like... The lake is significant. Take him to a lake. Oh, well, this is going to trigger something in this boy. Like, cause all that. Okay. So it was him? I just... I didn't know, so... Do quiet places make you uncomfortable? Not particularly. Do you just hate the lake, then? It's none of your business. You say you wish to get to know me better, but I can't say I feel the same. Not even a little? Not even a little. You're no fun. Eh, what else is new? Oh, Miss Arisu, I'm a detective, and you are my client. Do you think detectives are meant to intrude on their clients' private lives? I don't know. You see it a lot in soap operas. Soap operas are not real life. Soap operas are fictional. Is it me? Do I make you uncomfortable? I wouldn't say that's entirely wrong. Wow! Ouch! <sighs> kind of sounds like he changed track at the last minute, though. I apologize for hurting you, but given your personality, I decided it would be best that I didn't mince words. That makes sense. It's important to establish a relationship built on honesty. Talking to you exhausts my will to live. <laughs> oh my fucking god. Oh, Red. Oh, that's not even cool. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Christ's sakes. Oh my god. Oh, I appreciate this translation because I can't imagine this was this good in the trash one, but wow. Talking to you exhausts my will to live. Really? But it's so much fun! I gotta give her props. She does. I would be like, I'm gonna go drown myself in the lake. Thanks. Fun. Yeah! We always have the most scintillating conversations. It's great! You remind me of him. Huh? You're the second person to claim that speaking with a dullard such as myself is in any way fun. Now that I think about it, you resemble him in other ways as well. Was it our brother? That's okay, I'm saying go back to that. I resemble this other person who said you were fun to talk to. Oh my god, wait, is the happy ending in his route he and my brother end up together? Because they're gay? I just. Could I be our brother then? I'm, I'm okay with that, but it just makes me feel weird that I just set them up. <laughs> Take him to the lake. He's like, why the lake? It reminds me of my first love. Oh my god, my brother. Weird. <laughs> That's the kind of drama that would be great in some of these games, but then I'd be like, but I, I wanted romance in the game, but between me and some cute anime boy, not between him and another. I'm, unless I'm also an anime boy, then I'd be okay with that too, but I'm not my brother. So watching them make out would be weird. <laughs> like, oh. I'm match... That's like a matchmaker at Tome game. We're like, you get nothing! But you can match up people. That could be fun. Be like a stat raising game though, and that's just too much to slog through. Anyway. Yes. You are both tactless, outspoken... And you willfully misinterpret everything to suit your own desires. Sounds like he was friendly, optimistic, assertive sort of guy. You just love to have the last word, don't you? Frankly, I'm downright impressed. Thanks. 
That was sarcasm. I, s I swear, you were completely incorrigible. So could you tell me more about your friend? I think not. That question isn't... relevant to the mission, I know. Then kindly refrain from asking. Hehe! <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. You're freaking me out. Oh, nothing. It felt like Red was steadily becoming less formal and more curt with me. Perhaps this was the real him. Yes, just as much of an ass as he was before. But, you know, before he was very, like, standoffish, and now he's just very vocal about being mean to you. But we kind of like the abuse. If you had glasses on, one on I'd be 100%. We're at, like, 95%. Because I love you anyway, but the glasses would have just... Okay, we're about 90, because the glasses would have added a whole 10%. That's all I'm saying. They're, they're important. So you're still going to protect me, even though I make you uncomfortable? And that's the duty I've been assigned. I see. You really are loyal to your job, huh? If you have no further business here, let us return home. Wait! What is it? He scowled at me, so I beamed back. Why don't you come a little closer? What? Think about it. We're always standing so far apart. More of your nonsense. The distance between us is irrelevant. Evidently, my ulterior motive was on full display, because he blatantly stepped away from me. We were four feet apart. Not too far away for any sort of casual physical contact. Could you at least come one step closer? Just one? I must have sounded like a total creep. I mean, she's not wrong. That's great, though. You know what I mean, right? Come on, baby, just the tip. That kind of thing. <laughs> oh, God! Okay, can I just tell you, the people that localize this really just need to localize so much more. Because they're really good, and I don't know if the writing in this game is like... Was really like this. You know, I mean, obviously, I'm, I would assume, like, the phrases and everything might be a little bit different. You know, like, come on, baby, just the tip. I don't know if that's like... <laughs> you know what I mean? If that is that like a thing that people have said in Japan before. I mean, I know it's an American thing. I know we've all heard that, but I'm you know what I'm just saying? Like there's kind of phrases and things like that that might be different for different cultures. So they obviously said something like that. Some kind of creepy thing. But I like how like the people who translated this obviously were like if it said something kind of different, they were like, "Well, that's kind of like a Japanese specific thing." And people in, that are reading this in English might not understand it, but come on, baby, just the tip. Yeah, that'll be... that. That's basically where we're going. And it's just... I don't know. But it's just so good. And I appreciate it so much. And we need them to do more of these because... I just feel like the little flair that they put into the translation is just so fucking funny. And I'm guessing that the writing in the game probably had some of this to begin with. Just like London Detective Mysteria was so, like, colorful and poetic with its language. But you gotta hand it to the translation as that they, like translated that and just wrote it out as beautifully as it was. Like, I just I don't know. I want to give applause to the people who wrote the game and the people who translated it because I just feel like it was a nice combination of efforts that gives us these gems and shit. Holy crap. I'm gonna cry. These are funny. No. Can I come closer then? At the suggestion, Red preemptively took another step back. I said no, and I meant it. <laughs> no means no! Spacey. Not sure how you expect to protect me from all the way over there. But although I felt this was a valid point, given my skill, I assure you, I can manage just fine. He refused to accept it. Oh, I know! How about we compare our hand sizes? <laughs> no. Comparing hands is a great way to mess around and flirt, but only if both parties are willing. I rack my brain for other ways to initiate physical contact, pretend to have a heart attack. Fine, let's go home. Took you long enough. Can you at least help me up? I reached out my hands, tilting my head as cutely as possible. His expression was so icy it nearly gave me freezer burn. 
If you like, you can grab hold of this. Oh my god. When he knelt down, I was like, there's no way he's actually going to fall for this. He picked up a fallen tree branch and held it out to me. Wow, jerk. No. Then I guess you don't need my help. Okay, okay. Thank you. Slumping my shoulders, I grabbed the branch. Truth be told, I could have gotten to my feet just fine without his help, but since he offered, I didn't want to turn him down. Up we go. But just as I hoisted myself up onto my feet, I belatedly realized that all that sitting had made them go numb. That, and either I'd snapped the branch or it slipped out of my hand. Either way, gravity pulled me right back down. By which I mean I stumbled and fell. <gasps> Spacey. Oh, he called me by name. For some reason, everything seemed to happen in slow motion. Still, I couldn't fight it. Instead, I gaped into its grav- uh, <clears throat> Still, I couldn't fight it. Instead, I gave into gravity's pull. I'm gonna fall right into the lake, aren't I? That was close. Th thank you. I felt a hard impact, and my consciousness returned. I had nearly plunged myself into the lake, but thankfully Red had caught me at the last second. Talk about a hyper-competent police officer. My wrist ached, but we were both too busy to heaving a sigh of relief. Until we regained our composure, that is. Then we realized his hand was on my wrist. <gasps> he touched me. Oh. My eyes sparkled as I looked up at him happily. Girl. Figured I would... I said fake a heart attack and not fall in the fucking lake. But I mean, whatever. Uh, uh, uh. What's wrong? All of a sudden, Red began to breathe heavily. Then I realized his face was now as red as his riding hood. <laughs> he just screams. I don't think I can scream like him. I, I can't scream in that voice. I can't. That's the best I can do. Ah! I can't scream in the deep voice, but anyway. Ah! D d don't touch me, woman. Huh? The next thing I knew, he shoved me away. And this time I did fall into the lake. Ow, ow, ow. Rubbing my sword tushy. <laughs> I staggered to my feet and made eye contact with Red. Red. Uh, your clothes. And change your clothes. What? He clapped both hands over his face. I looked down on myself and realized I was soaked from head to toe. Uh, admittedly, I wasn't sure what exactly there was to scream about. Sure, I was dripping wet, but this wasn't exactly a fan service scene from an anime or anything. No, the fan service scene would be him naked and wet, but not us. So what was so suggestive about it? That I made it my clothes hug my curves a little tighter? Meanwhile, Red peeked at me through the gaps in his fingers. Oh my god! This is your fault! I mean, I brought you here and I was trying to get you to touch me, so I mean, it's kind of indirectly my fault, but like, you're the one who pushed me in the lake, motherfucker! <laughs> this path. Cover yourself, you indecent slut! I can't say that with a straight face. With what? I don't have anything! Use this then. All of a sudden, my vision turned scarlet. Is this your riding hood? Then it hit me. Maybe this is my chance. Maybe now I can see him without his hood on. Red! I whipped off the hood at the speed of light. Ah! Oh, he's... Ah, ah. Oh, rats. It turned out he had another riding hood on under the first one. The actual fuck! This <sighs> you jerk! He made me get my hopes up for nothing! Not my problem. His face was still beat red as he screamed at me. Are you okay? You look really flushed. And then it hit me. He, his face is flushed because he's uncomfortable with women. He's coming down with something. I'm pretty sure it's the uncomfortable with women, but... Maybe you're not a frigid air after all. Maybe you're just a shy boy who doesn't know how to interact with girls.
<laughs> Frigid air. What's that supposed to mean? Am I some sort of refrigerator? Is that it? Quit giving me weird labels. This is precisely why I detest women. He's like so closet gay. Oh, come on. You know how in anime there's sundere and kudere and stuff? It's like that. Besides, for all you know, frigid air could have been invented by a man. Silence! None of that matters right now. We need to hurry up and fix this. You're dripping wet. <laughs> I think we're turning them on because we're wet. Really? I probably look like a drowned rat. That is not sexy. Okay, not at all. Whoa, are you okay? Out of nowhere, he clutched at his nose as blood gushed forth. <laughs> <laughs> All the tropes. All of them are just wrapped up in that little red cloak. Jesus Christ. Oh my god. I, I'm i fine. So stay away. Don't make me look at that. Uh, okay. I heave myself to my feet and wrap Red's riding hood around myself. Achoo! Granted, I'd only fall into the shallows, but I was still soaked from top to bottom, and I was freezing. Shivering in the winter winds, I attempted to assess the situation. Upon touching my wrist in order to help me to my feet, Red flipped out and lost his usual composure. Maybe the reason he always kept his distance from me wasn't that he didn't like me specifically. Maybe he just wasn't comfortable around women in general. Oh no! That's so cute! <laughs> okay, Red. I'll keep my distance. You'd better swear on your life. Okay, I swear. For now, let's just go home. She's so much better than me. Because she's like, ha ha, are you scared of I'm just going to keep... And like, if I had fallen in the lake and he acted like that, I'd be like, what the actual fuck? And I'd have just stormed off. I'll be damned. Uh, that's fine. Let the wolf kidnap me in the woods. Just fuck you. As so long as he doesn't put me in a fucking cage, whatever. Like, I'd been so pissed. Don't get me wrong, I still love Red, but I'd have been so pissed. I'd been like, you are such a fucking asshole. Like, he basically made an ass of you. And you're like, oh, that's so cute. <laughs> like, what the fuck? But he's being quite hilarious, so. Oh, shit. Did I just sneeze again? I, uh, there was some crumb on my trackpad for some reason. I clicked it, so I missed that, but you saw it. But that's okay. I'm, I'm assuming it was a chew. And so I sneezed for the upteenth time that day. Welcome to my life. Ugh. As soon as we got home, I lit a fire, took a shower, and changed into dry clothes. Sadly, my body had yet to stop shivering. My head was all fuzzy, too. Pardon, um, Miss Arisu. Yes? I turned to find Red standing just outside the living room. Oh, Right. Thank you for letting me borrow your riding hood. I'll be sure to wash it before I give it back. R right. No problem. But, uh, that's not why I'm here. Having regained his sanity? Red now averted his gaze awkwardly. What is it? I just, uh, wanted to sincerely apologize for my irrational behavior earlier. Red? Can we at least have this conversation in the same room? Evidently, he was too on guard to come any closer. You've got nothing to be embarrassed about. Come on. I patted the spot next to me on the sofa. No. Oh, no. Thank you. Please? I tilted my head trying to be cute. No. Apparently, he's immune to feminine wiles. I mean, I am just saying, I, at this point, I'd be like, you're gay, aren't you? Like, I, I just, I, I mean, I know that can be the way it's going, because we are, uh, and that would just be really weird. But I'm just saying it's concerning. Achoo! Bless you. Thanks. Achoo! Ugh. Again, this is so my life right now. I'd really like to stop sneezing soon. Girl, you and me both. Are you perhaps coming down with something? Me? No way. But then again, I've had the chills for a while now. That's an early indication of the common cold. 
You should really rest up for today. Or the fact that it's just motherfucking cold. Ugh. <laughs> I'm always fucking cold, so... Yes. I'm cold all over, right down to my heart. But I bet I'd... But I bet I'd warm up if you'd give me a big hug. I refuse. Jeez, I was joking. You don't have to shoot me down so hard. Feels like I have no mental filter, and now I'm just babbling nonsense. I kind of feel like that's the way it's been the whole game. That and my face is flushed, and my breathing is labored. Almost like his overreaction at the lake rubbed off on me. Miss Arisu, Red? Feeling suffocated, I looked to him for help, but the words wouldn't come. All I could do was struggle to breathe. D Don't look at me all feverishly like that. I I'll get the wrong idea. For some reason, this set Red into a fluster. Don't look at me while you're sick and ill. I might get rabies. What the fuck? <laughs> Dude, he's got some serious fucking issues. That's weird. Why is he all fuzzy? That was the moment my consciousness faded. <clears throat> okay, so is it... Come on. Where are you going? Right from the first... Oh, ahem. <clears throat> We're definitely right right now. Because, hi. Um. Can I just tell you this is Wolf? Because he's got ears on his thing and the three little puffy balls that Wolf has on his thing. So, I. Okay, anyway. I'm assuming we're red again. So I'm just going to kind of read it in his voice. So, anyway. Right from the first day we met, if you can call it that, he started coming to talk to me every day without fail. Oh, wait, no, maybe? It is us, because Wolf was our friend? I don't know. I'm just going to read it normal, because I don't know who it is. I'm not sure. Because our mother wouldn't have told us that everyone were... You know? I don't know. I don't know. I'm just going to read it normal, because I don't know who it is. I really don't. Anyway. Right from the first day we met, if you can call it that, he started coming to talk to me every day without fail. It didn't matter how hard I ignored him. Hey, come on! Hey! Fine, forget it. But just when I thought he'd thrown in the towel for good. The other day, my grandma was like... For some reason, he launched into a story of his own volition. We're too friendly and social to have been this shut-in kid that never talked to anyone, so I just don't understand this, but anyway. I was so baffled. The cold shoulder had worked just fine on everyone else. So what made this one so different? I feel like we have to be red in this case, but I'm not sure. Oh, there you are! Found you! As soon as he got sight of me, he'd follow me around and talk at, and talk at me endlessly. Then what? Oh, yeah, no, we are red. Oh, my God, I'm so dumb. We are red because he was talking about that per that kid that wouldn't talk to him incessantly or whatever. But this is so wolf. Or Red somehow had a cloak that looked exactly like this, or the kid he did. What? You know what I mean? Does Wolf have an over older brother? I don't know. Anyway, okay, I'm going to go back to reading this like Red, because I completely forgot about that. I'm not very smart today, if you can't tell. Or like ever, but anyway. And as soon as he'd caught sight of me, he'd follow me around and talk at me endlessly. And then once he was satisfied, he would leave of his own accord. He'd talk to me about his beloved grandmother, about martial arts about books he read. He even caught me up on the latest neighborhood gossip. As I listened to him talk, I had to fight the urge to reply. Unlike me, he seemed to have fun and a fun and exciting life, and he didn't seem like one of the wicked wolves my mother described. But if I wanted to stay a precious angel, then I couldn't disobey her. Yeah, because his mother called him the okay. You and me were comrades, you know? I stopped and turned back. No one had ever said that to me before. In response, he shot me a goofy grin. I'm not wrong, am I? You're so rational and smart, you don't rely on anybody but yourself. We're lone wolves, not by necessity, but by choice. It's the code we live by. No, I think you're just annoying and nobody wants to be friends with you. <laughs> so mean. Oh, that's that's the story of my life, too. Little pats him on head. Frankly, I didn't understand what he meant. Rational, smart, self-reliant. But was that how the rest of the world saw me? Not only that, but he thought we were comrades? Comrade, 
A companion who shares one's activities or beliefs. I should have read that in Tour Guide's spacey voice. We're all fucked up with the voices right now. You know what? Just this whole part. Peas in a pod, in other words. Another reason why it's wolf, I'm just saying. But what did that mean? We didn't look alike, nor did we think alike. Nor did we enjoy the same things. You enjoy nothing, to be fair. But if he thought me as a... He, <clears throat> but if he thought me a comrade, then clearly we had to have something in common. I didn't know what that something was, but if we were so alike, then surely it was safe to make an exception for him. That's how they get you. Con artists. <laughs> I awoke to find myself in bed. Good morning, Mr. Jisu. Where am I? Don't you remember? You passed out in the living room. I did? Forcing my fuzzy brain to search my memories, I realized I could only recall sitting in front of the fireplace and nothing beyond. Did you carry me here? Huh? Well, maybe... How? I... I didn't do anything inappropriate! Your voice is cracking. Look, I took you and... I... I lifted you... I guess? I didn't do anything inappropriate! <laughs> His mother has destroyed this poor man. Just being anywhere near a woman is inappropriate. Good lord. He's leaving all the room for Jesus. Oh, it's still one of the funniest lines in this. He mimed the action with his hands. Looks like he's describing a bridal carry. You physically carried me, even though it made you uncomfortable. Thanks. That means a lot. Ugh. As I smiled, his face burned bright red. Dang it. Red bridal carried me, and I don't remember it. I'm gonna regret this for the rest of my life. So, so uh, how are you feeling? Mm, I still feel a little flushed. Would you like me to dampen your washcloth? Yes, please. Very well. In that case, go ahead and toss it to me. You want me to throw it at you? I feel like you could get some of your frustrations out, throw it really hard. We're sick, so it would be like, womp womp. Yes. You just can't bear to go near me, is that it? He stiffened. With this fever draining my energy, I really wasn't up to the task, so I sought a compromise. How about this? I'll face the other way while you come and grab it for me. Would that work for you? I suppose it could. With his consent granted, I set the washcloth on my pillow and turned my body away from it. There in the silence, I heard him swallow hard. Then slowly, but surely, I heard him approach. This poor thing is like fucking Bambi. I don't know how to walk on my legs. Don't know how to be near a girl. What the fuck? <laughs> You sound like a total pervert. Can you blame me? L look, don't talk to me right now. Okay, whatever. Can you blame? You sound like a total pervert. Can you blame me? You're just walking to get a washcloth. So yes, I can blame you for being like... <sighs> having creepy, heavy breathing. Got it. I've got it. He shouted in triumph. Cool. Congrats. I applauded him from under the covers, then turned back in his direction. He had taken, or should I say snatched, the washcloth from me and plunged it into a pail of cold water. He must have done this for me countless times while I was sleeping, and I bet it took all of his courage, too. The thought made me so happy, I couldn't help but grin from ear to ear. Oh hey, where'd this flower come from? That was when I noticed the pretty red flower sitting in a vase on my bedside table. It looked a bit like a rose, except softer and less intimidating. This is a carnation, isn't it? It's so cute. Did you put this here for me? Yes. Forgive me if it was overstepping my bounds. My god, he's so fucking cute and awkward. What the fuck? <laughs> kind of an asshole. 
I kind of like that he's not, I feel like he's different because he's like not your typical ass. Like he's kind of got the asshole vibes. Like he's a bit of a dick, but like it's this cute, awkward, adorable dick. And you're like, I just, it's so weird. I don't, I feel like I can't remember a love interest that was like, you know what? No, Kent was like this in Amnesia. You were like, you're kind of an asshole, but it's just because you're completely fucking awkward, like absurdly awkward. And that's, I love it. It's just, I feel like we don't see it enough. Maybe you get the asshole, but like, they're not usually this blatantly fucking awkward. Like they might have some awkward, but there's a lot of awkward. There's a lot. Like just a ridiculous amount of like socially inept. And it's great. Uh, he must have purchased it from the flower shop. His thoughtfulness warmed my heart. Thank you. Oh, it was no trouble. But I stopped him. I really appreciate it. He pulled his hood low over his eyes, probably to hide his embarrassment. <laughs> it's been a while since I last caught a cold. I'm sorry. It's entirely my fault. If only I hadn't shoved you into the lake. I mean, not untrue. It's not your fault. If anything, it was my fault for screwing around with you. I'm sorry being a wonderful person by accepting that you have a little bit to blame, but also he has some blame. Like, we're both to blame here. And for the record, you don't have to stand on ceremony with me. Just speak your mind. I can't possibly do that. You and I... We're living under the same roof, aren't we? We're comrades, if only for the short term. Comrades. Yeah. He abruptly closed his eyes. I don't work well with others. You prefer to go it alone? That way I don't overthink things. Like you're doing right now. All right, I've wrung out your washcloth. Face that way, please. Otherwise I'll just toss it onto you. I obediently turned away. <sighs> Once again, Red slowly approached me, breathing heavily. <laughs> So fucking hilarious. If anyone saw us right now, they'd probably think he was about to have his way with me or something. I waited until he was really close, then flipped onto my back. Yeah! Yeah! As he screamed, he dropped the washcloth directly onto my face. <laughs> We're such an asshole, but it's kind of fucking funny. Oh, that feels nice, actually. The cloth felt cool and refreshing against my flushed skin. Beside me, Red clapped both hands over his face and curled into the fetal position. <laughs> I'm so glad we did this one last. This one's fucking hilarious. Look, I love Cinderella, don't get me wrong, but this one is just fucking good. This one is hilarious. It's not nice to scream at, helpless at a helpless little girl. I didn't even touch you. I apologize. I know we've already touched, but for some reason, mere eye contact with you is enough to trigger my fight or flight response. Fight or flight response? Seriously? I rolled my eyes. Glancing around awkwardly, Red began to fish for a change of subject. And that reminds me, um... Hmm? I made you some rice porridge. You did? Thank you. This was so unexpected, I perked right up. The thing is, I, um, I must apologize. It was my first time preparing it, and as such, I wasn't sure how... Oh, I was your first time? I'm honored. I think you might actually be. I mean, I don't think that's hard to get to that conclusion. M my first time? He echoed my words suggestively. But I merely responded with a smile. She knows so bad what she's doing. She is such a shady bitch. I love it. I was your first time? That's what he's like, my first time. And you're like, please. You can't even look me in the eye. You definitely have never touched a girl. Except for that wrist touch. Woo, that wrist action. What's the matter? Oh, her. It's nothing. So where's the porridge? Well... I did bring it here for you, but... He hesitated. Then reluctantly, he fetched the pot of porridge from the table and lifted the lid to show me. 
I mixed in some corned beef and mackerel to improve the nutritional value. Wow! It all looks and smells so... unique! <laughs> Normally porridge was meant to be white in color, but this one had turned to dingy brown. I'll just toss it out. No, don't! I want to try it! I'm so hungry I'm dying! Oh, in that case, be my guest. Girl must love him and really want the D to be trying to eat this shit. Now how do I eat this? I had no strength left in my body. How was I supposed to get up and go to the dining room? Hey, Red? Yes? Could you feed it to me? Girl, are you trying to kill him? I think she's trying to kill him. What? You know, the say-ah thing where the healthy person feeds the weaker person? Is a pretty common trope, I feel like. We did do that in the Cinderella one. The say ah thing? Yeah, come on. Ah. Uh... I closed my eyes and opened my mouth. Say ah. Uh... Wait. Don't close your eyes and open your mouth in public. It's not safe. I opened my eyes to find Red peeking out from behind the door, blushing beet red. What were you thinking, you dirty, dirty pervert? I know what we were all thinking when he said that, but I mean, we're dirty, dirty perverts, and... Well, how else am I supposed to eat? Eat it yourself. If you have the energy to talk, then surely you have the energy to use your hands. Like, we're so tormenting him. I'm surprised he hasn't left you already. We're like, I... We are torturing this man. We might as well be Toma, trapping him in a cage. This is basically like... We are so cold. We are so mean. I love it. It's fucking wrong. Oh, yeah? Is that how you want to play this? Well, two can play it that game. <coughs> uh, I'm so dizzy all of a sudden. I think my cold is getting worse. Liar! Uh, I'm not lying. You meanie. Those are fake tears. Can you please just feed me? If getting sicker won't work and crying won't work, then all that's left is to beg. Uh, once again, I closed my eyes and opened my mouth. You were going to get the porridge in the face. <laughs> but no matter how long I waited, no porridge came. Because he is being a dirty, dirty little pervert, thinking of inappropriate things while you have your eyes closed and your mouth open is all I'm saying. Waiting for something to enter it. Shame on you, Red! I opened one eye to find him bent over me, leaning his upper body as far back as possible as he pointed a spoonful of porridge at me. I took that opportunity to seize him by the wrist and steer the spoon into my mouth. You ate it right out of my hand. Hmm, it's good. I swallowed the ice-cold porridge and licked my lips. And now you just licked your lips at a- I mean, this man can't even handle looking at you, for fuck's sake. Like, girl, what are you doing? It's great, I love it. You're cold. You should try a bite. That would be an indirect kick. Uh-oh, your nose is bleeding again. <laughs> this is the best fucking part of this game. A stream of blood trickled down his face. Let me get you a tissue. Here, use this. Tissue. Lewd. This is the part. This one. I was talking in the last part with a different, like, the trash version of this translation and this one. Okay. This tissue. Lewd. Like, okay. That is a totally different connotation than in the trash version. It was tissue. It was erotic. <laughs> that's, that's two totally different... Saying something is erotic and something is lewd are two totally different things. Like tissue, erotic. It sounds like you get turned on. Oh, you get, you think tissues are sexy, huh? Yeah. Like, you you can't go down the Kleenex aisle at the grocery store without being so turned on. Like, I mean, oh, we, we might have to play the trash version of this. <laughs> Especially if I can't occupy... Well, it'll be good. I'll finish all of this, then I'll go at Christmas, and then I'll come back, and I won't be as sad that I don't have the rest of it to play. <laughs> it's gotta come out. There's no way we can live without the rest of this. This is fucking amazing. Anyway. 
I decided not to ask what he was envisioning. Meanwhile, blood gushed from his nose. I'd leaned... I learned one thing from this. Red's mind was as perverted as a 12-year-old boy's. Or maybe worse. The... the porridge. He held the pot away from himself to avoid contaminating the food. Meanwhile, a red river continued to flow down his handsome face. I'll take the porridge. In the meantime, stare at the ceiling until your nose stops bleeding. Unable to bear another second, I decided to take control of the situation. Okay. He handed me the pot of porridge, clutched his nose, and tilted his head back. Is that helping? I mean, I don't even think a 12-year-old boy would be like, do you need a tissue for your bloody nose? And they'd be like, oh my god, I'm so turned on by that. Like, <gasps> that's so lewd. Like, no, you, I mean, for God's sake, you are worse than a 12-year-old. Jesus. It's kind of funny. It's kind of scary, but it's kind of funny. I gave him a moment to calm down before he spoke. Yeah. You really can't handle being around girls, huh? It's not that. Just don't like them. You sure about that? I smirked playfully. <laughs> well, 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 anyway, you've got a fresh wash washcloth, and you've got your porridge. Write your medicine. After you eat, be sure to take your medicine, understand? Okay? I smiled and nodded. Your body is unwell, which means you need to stay in bed and rest. Will you stay with me? G uh, of course I will. I'm here to protect you, after all. Aw, you're embarrassed! <laughs> I am not embarrassed! Looking back, he was actually as Looking back, was he actually as embarrassed as I thought he was? Or was I just delirious from my fever? Ah, perfect place to end it. Okay, so I'm going to wrap this part up here. And we will continue in the next part. So I will see you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up. And subscribe to see more.